And let's show you what this looks like inside Seven Signal. So guys, today you should be able to see that. Give me the thumbs up if you can. All right. Okay, here we go, guys. So this is a high density customer who has, I wanted to show you kind of what Sapphire Eyes at Seven Signal, what they see from their point of view when they're in an arena, when they're in a stadium. And this is really cool. So if you look at the date time range here, it's just kind of like, this is the beginning of the day. And then boom, you can see the event when the event was at, you know, seven, eight, nine o'clock, right? 10 o'clock. And this is just really cool how you can see how all of the different service areas, how the airtime utilization just spikes up and then comes down. One of the cool things about Sapphire is that it's measuring what's going on in your environment when the network is empty so that you can baseline as well as when it fills up and it's full. And this is really important, especially in high density, especially in these arenas and these stadiums. Because if you don't have a good baseline, then how are your fans and your guests going to have a great Wi-Fi experience? The bar has to be at a really good level first and foremost. How do we know? We use seven signal. All right, so this is airtime utilization. And you can see here, you know, right at about the 40 to 50% uh, percent level on average here, it doesn't get higher than that. So that indicates a nice, healthy environment, right? If we're not climbing all the way up to the 80s and 90s, that means that we've got a good channel plan and everybody is spread out, lots of lanes on the highway, right? Good, good stuff, just like Jeff was saying. All right, so now let's go down here. Now, this is QBSS channel utilization. Now, this is different. Seven Signal looks at both. We look at what's coming from the controller, and that's what this is right here. And we're also calculating our own airtime utilization, which is based upon traffic flying through the air. QBSS is going to take into account mm, like some idle you know, clients and stuff like that. So that's why the airtime utilization here that we calculate is always going to be a little bit lower than what we see over here because we're not taking into account some of those things. The same thing is true with station count. So station count, and Jim was talking about this before, station count from QBSS is taking into account all of those idle clients. And it's really important to see, are there a lot of idle clients or not? Because idle clients not sending a lot of stuff through the air concern us less, right? And let's go down here. This is what Seven Signal is calculating. So here you can see that the average per station uh, or the you know number of um, clients here is only in you know 18, 19, you know, 17, 18, 19, whereas up here it's a lot different story. So we're going to be able to give you a picture of what's really going on. All right, so now let's go a little bit further. Okay. Oh, check this out, guys. You're going to like this. Okay, so first we've got probe request channel utilization. So look at this, there are very little clients in the arena, so there's not a lot of whole lot of probe requesting going on, but you can see that when the event starts, how the probe requests spike up. Nevertheless, look at the Y axis and you'll see that probe request channel as a, as a portion of channel utilization is still only two to 3%. But what about all those responses? Remember when your phone, when you're in the arena is going to kind of do its little probe and all those access points can hear. And if they can hear, they're going to reply right back and say, I'm here, connect to me, connect to me. And so that's what this looks like. Yowzer, look at the percentage of utilization from just probe responses. Again, if you don't have a healthy Wi-Fi environment, then, um, then this is gonna be a, a huge problem for you. And this is a nice way for us to gauge, okay, do we have good baseline? Yes. What happens when the event begins? You can see the probe response channel utilization really spike up into the 30s here, and then it comes back down after the event is over. Now, this is one of the reasons why it's so important to use some of those controller settings. And Jim, I'm gonna to turn to you for a second. I think it's like the trans, it's the T-SOP. What is that setting called where you can actually create like a cutoff? Like if it's not a certain signal strength, then don't yeah. respond, is that right? Yeah, there's a, few, there's a few different ways to accomplish that. A lot of vendors have some high density, uh, special sauce proprietary features. Um, probably the most common one is a form of probe response suppression. So 
an AP, if it doesn't hear a probe request above a certain uh, signal strength threshold, it just won't respond. And in a big open bowl, you know, arena environment, that's really important because otherwise every single AP on the channel is going to hear that probe response. You know, it was sent at a low data rate. It's open air. It's going to travel forever. And then every AP on the channel is going to respond and you'd get a disaster like this. So those probe response suppression uh, features are, are valuable. There's another feature that um, Cisco has called uh, RX SOP, which is a more of like a brick wall. Any signal that's um, received below a certain threshold will just be discarded and, and transmitted over, um, which is, again, helpful in those very high density environments. Super, super important. Again, you know, we want to be able to look at that percentage and we want to invoke these features that Jim is describing in order to get that percentage of utilization down just a little bit in order to gain back the airtime that we need in order to have a good experience. Now, speaking of a good experience, the last thing I'd like to show you here is how we are measuring what the experience is in the arena during the event. And so we can do that by looking at ping round trip time all before, and you can see how the round trip time kind of spikes just a little bit. Nevertheless, keeping mind of the mindful of the Y axis still looking pretty good. Now let's go back up here. This is upload throughput. Upload throughput in an arena is absolutely critical because everybody's uploading their photos to Instagram or to Snapchat or whatever, right? And so from that manner, you better have good upload throughput. So I really like what this arena has done in setting the bar very high you can see that when the stadium is empty, you can see we're, we're pushing you know, 130 to 150 megabits per second. When the, so really nice you know, pipe, there, right? And then when the event begins, you can see how it dips down the upload throughput, but it doesn't bottom out. It dips down to a point where we're at about 10, 20, 30 megabits per second, which is still healthy enough in order to do the things that customers need to do in order to have a great experience at the venue. And then the last one, of course, download throughput so that we can download these awesome photos and, and videos and whatnot. And the same thing, starting out at a very high bar, the event begins, but you know, going down to about 20 to 30 megabits per second during the event in order to ensure that everybody's having a great experience. So there you have it, guys. Using seven signal sapphire eyes strategically placed around the arena in order to ensure a great quality Wi-Fi experience for our guests. So there you have it. Happy to be here with you guys today. And remember, you and me, we can't see or hear Wi-Fi, but Seven Signal can. Thanks for joining us. Eric, great job. Uh, as always, Jeff, excellent to have you here. Great work uh, this week. We hope you'll join us again. And we hope all of you will join us next week as we have another uh, edition of our Wi-Fi Best Practice webinar series. Jim, thanks for all the color along the way. Um, great work. See you all next week. Have a great weekend, everybody. Enjoy uh, the 4th of July for those of you in the U.S. Thanks, everybody. Nice job, Jeff. Thanks again, Jim.